In today's video, we will look at one of the technical indicators that is Relative Strength Index, popularly known as RSI, and see how this can be used in selection of mutual funds. Hello everyone, I am Dawal and welcome to my channel DIY Finance. You all must be familiar with technical indicators, especially the people who deal in stocks generally use these technical indicators like RSI that is Relative Strength Index, MA that is Moving Averages, Supports and Resistance Levels, Trend Lines etc. for selection and prediction for the movement of stocks. Here we will look into how these technical indicators can be used in selection of mutual funds. In today's video, we will see in detail about one technical indicator that is RSI and how this can be used in selection of mutual funds. I will try to cover other technical indicators in my next videos. So stay tuned to my channel and if you have not subscribed to my channel, then do subscribe to my channel right now and also press the bell icon so as not to miss such interesting videos. Generally mutual funds are evaluated using fundamental analysis rather than technical analysis. As mutual fund investments are long term investments and investors generally follow a buy and hold strategy of investment. But common technical indicators can provide a valuable insight for almost all type of investments and not only mutual funds. So to start with, let's see what is RSI, that is Relative Strength Index. RSI can be defined as a momentum indicator that compares the magnitude of recent gains to recent losses in order to evaluate whether the investment instrument is overbought or oversold. To explain in simple words, RSI value would indicate whether the investment instrument here we will refer now as mutual fund is overvalued or undervalued. The value of RSI is plotted on the scale of 0 to 100. Now let's see how this RSI is calculated. RSI can be calculated in two steps. Now let's look at the first step. The average gain or loss used in this calculation is the average percentage gain or loss during a look back period. The formula uses a positive value for the average loss. Periods with price losses are counted as zero in the calculation of average gain. Period with price increase are counted as zero in the calculation of average losses. The standard number of periods used to calculate the initial RSI value is 14. For example, imagine the market closed higher 7 out of past 14 days with an average gain of 1%. The remaining 7 days all closed lower with an average loss of minus 0.8%. The first calculation for the RSI would look like the following expanded calculations. Once there are 14 periods of data available, the second calculation can be done. Its purpose is to smooth the result so that the RSI only nears 100 or 0 in a strong trending market. After the RSI is calculated, the RSI indicator can be plotted beneath an asset's price chart. The RSI will rise as the number and size of the up days increases. It will fall as the number and size of down days increases. Ok, now this seems quite a complicated mathematical calculation, right? Do not worry. I had just shown these steps for understand in purpose only. Most sites which have historical data of investment instruments will also have an option of plotting the RSI value on it. The RSI graph is generally plotted below the investment instrument price chart as shown in this example. Now let's see the actual data of Nifty 50 for last one year and I have plotted the RSI graph below it. Generally Nifty 50 is the benchmark index for most of the large cap funds. Hence for large cap funds you can take into consideration the RSI value of Nifty 50. Same way, you can also plot RSI graph for other indexes corresponding to the respective mutual fund benchmark indexes. An RSI above 70 would suggest that the mutual, mutual fund is overbought and its value is overpriced and it is highly possible that the price will go down from here. Same way, an RSI below 30 indicates an oversold state that may trigger a bounce back. As evident from the graph, on the mark dates, that is 17 January and 4th April, the RSI index had touched 70 mark and then it went down, so as the Nifty also went down. Same way on 16th of June, 
it went below the 30 mark and on 20 june started its upward journey which can be correlated with the upward movement of nifty 50. hence you can use the 30 level as a buy signal and 70 level as a sell signal mutual fund investments are a long-term investment and hence a regular and a disciplined way of investment should be followed for wealth creation but this type of indicators can be used to add additional lump sum investment to the existing fund which can provide an overall boost to the returns of the fund. This is just the basic example of RSI with real data of Nifty 50. For a more and accurate utilization of RSI, one should be familiar with the RSI divergence also. The ISI divergence is a very long topic and it is not possible to cover the same in this video. So I will try to make a separate video for RSI divergence and try to explain how better it can be used for mutual funds. Before discussing the limitations of RSI, I would request all of you that as you have watched the video till now, it seems that the topic is of your interest. Hence, I would request to press the like button and also subscribe to my channel to watch such interesting videos in future also. Now let's see the limitations of RSI. There is no such thing as a foolproof strategy that can be applied to make guaranteed profits in the market. Like every indicator and investment strategy, RSI indicators also have certain limitations. Below mentioned are some of the limitations. First, clear reversal signals are rare and can be difficult to separate from false alarms. Second, RSI indicator is not as helpful when the market shows a very strong trend. And third one, since the indicator displays momentum, it can stay in the overbought or oversold category for a long time when an asset has significant momentum in either direction. Therefore, the RSI is most useful in an oscillating market, that is a trading range, where the asset price is alternating between bullish and bearish movements. Hope you find this video useful. Do provide your feedback in the comment section where I, whether I should make next video on RSI divergence or should make video on other indicator like moving averages, support and resistance or trend lines. Thank you.